In this week's Here to Help video, we're going to hear from one of Parallax's training consultants, Steezer. He's got over 25 years experience in the civil and temporary traffic management industry. He's spent his career helping to orchestrate safe work sites by developing safe operating procedures and creating corrective action plans to assist improved behavior and understanding of the overall processes and standards on site. Steezer will be sharing some information on corrective action plans, also known as CAPS for short. CAPS are beneficial on both an individual and organizational learning level. The outcome from an effective CAP, if followed, can positively alter long-term outcomes and help an organization in analysis of identified deficiencies. To put it simply, a CAP is a step-by-step -step plan to improve performance, reduce risk, address specific errors in the operation of your business, and reduce the likelihood of the error reoccurring. A CAP should be viewed as an opportunity to improve, as they're often required after a failed TTM site condition rating. There are several situations where a CAP is required to be completed to close out an audit. These instances may be in response to a stop works order, an advice notice or notice of non-conformance to an individual, an organizational advice notice or organizational notice of non-conformance, following a review of the failures by a review panel. I'll hand it over to Steza, who's going to talk to you about CATS. Kia ora. In this Here to Help video, I am going to provide some key messages on how to prepare an effective CAP in response to a stop works order issued for the following non-compliant audit results. Unacceptable other, unacceptable 51 plus points, unacceptable multiple issues, dangerous, or the worksite is found to be operating outside of the approval conditions. There are several key aspects to consider when drafting an effective CAP. One, understand what and why the control areas failed you must identify all root causes that have contributed to the failures. Two, explore what contributed to the deficiencies. Focus on individual behavior, training, knowledge, experience, development, and resources provided. Three, drill down to root causes, systemic issues, or one-offs, which may also be indicative of a systemic culture issue within the organization. A good tip when drilling down to identify root causes is to use the five whys. The CAP outcome might form a personal development plan for an individual or organization. Four, seek verification with those involved in the TTM delivery chain. It must be developed using the principles of good faith consultation between the individual, the employer and client. Five, the proposed CAP needs to be signed off by the risk owner and or their representative prior to final submission with the RCA. The risk owner must sign off if they agree to the proposed CAP. 6. Share the learnings, failures with the rest of the business and implement the CAP. It must include ongoing monitoring to measure effectiveness of the CAP with respect to the root causes and allow you to modify your CAP if necessary. Each root cause identified should be evaluated for risk level and assigned a rating and priority. The higher the rating or priority, the sooner the deadline for implementation to mitigate your risk. Higher risk or priority issues need to be commenced within a week or sooner, whilst lower risk or lower priority issues might be planned to be commenced within a month. This means that the corrective action plan will often be looking towards improving the performance of the person or people responsible for managing the TTM space, also noting that there may be elements that would be beneficial for others in the same organisation. The CAP is about helping develop people and making lasting improvements. Auckland Transport will not grant worksite extensions or approval if there is an outstanding CAP attached to the worksite. Work cannot recommence at a worksite under a stop works order until an effective cap has been completed, signed off and implemented. At Parallax, we are often called in to help with the uplifting of a stop works order. We assist with developing corrective action plans for identified deficiencies, 
determining the root cause of the problem to ensure the failures do not happen again, closing out the stop works order against the worksite and getting the worksite up and running again. One of the keys to ensuring your worksite is safe is to do regular audits. There is a direct correlation between organisations who frequently internally audit their worksites and having a high level of compliance and safety. Organisations who do not internally audit their worksites generally have poor results when audited by Orca Transport. The worksites are not as safe and incidences of worker negligence are far more likely to increase. If workers are expecting to be audited frequently, they are much more likely to ensure they follow the rules and comply. In turn, this drives safer work cycles. For this reason, one of the most common actions required in a corrective action plan is to verify that the cap is effective on an ongoing basis. One of the best means to do this is to complete ongoing TTM site reviews once the stop works order has been uplifted or the cap has been signed off by the risk owner. Remember that you might need to revisit the corrective action plan to ensure known risks are mitigated and improve safe outcomes are achieved. At Parallax, we have highly experienced auditors who are experts at writing and implementing corrective action plans, assisting with lifting stop works orders and completing follow-up audits. We understand it can be daunting and time consuming to navigate the path to getting your worksite back up and running again. If you'd like any help with corrective action plans or auditing, don't hesitate to contact the team at Parallax. As always, we're here to help.